Good morning. Uh, this COVID-19 uh, virus thing, we're back under quarantine and unable to meet in our regular facilities. But I invite you to open up your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we'll continue our study in, in Timothy. Uh, Paul writes this letter to Timothy, a uh, young uh, preacher man at this time. Uh, Second Timothy is written to a much older Timothy who's much more experienced. But in this case, Paul's going to open up a little bit of um, what's going to happen in the future. And so I share with you, invite you to come in. First Timothy chapter 4. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, in, these are the later days, these are the later times, and people do, are listening to a lot of different voices out there, uh, voices that do not, are not biblical, they're not scriptural, but people, they, they make them sound so good, you know, whether it's a, a health issue that may make you want to do, follow their words, or um, maybe it just sounds nice, maybe, maybe it plays into what you're already doing in your life, but of course, as the Bible does, it just cuts right to the bone and says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, uh, forbidding to marry. It's better for you to be single. Never have kids, right? Uh, they command you to abstain from meats, uh, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And so the, the push for people to become uh, vegetarians and uh, vegans and you know, those kind of things, uh, it, it's not a, a biblical one. Now, you can do it for health reasons, yes, but to follow it as, as um, part of this uh, whole idea that you don't need to marry, you can just live off the government, basically, uh, you can have all the kids you want without a husband, you can do everything contrary to the Bible, it only costs you. When you listen to the Word of God and you do what God tells you to do, He blesses you and He takes care of you. He says, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. You can eat anything if it's received with thanksgiving. Uh, Peter kind of had this uh, experience in Acts chapter 10. Um, he saw this uh, vision come down with all these unclean animals opened up for him and he's like uh, and of course God speaks to him and says arise kill and eat. And of course Peter goes not so Lord I've, I've never eaten anything that was unclean and then he says don't you call anything unclean that I have cleansed, it says. And so how do you cleanse? You, you give with thanksgiving. So, let's start over, verse 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4 says, For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Um, my Russian... Uh, brothers and sisters and, and Ukrainian and they, they wait till the end of the meal because so many times in their history they would prepare this fabulous meal and just before they were going to sit down and eat they'd get broken in and all the food would be taken you know for the common good for the commissar for the for the um, uh, communist party and then they would be left with nothing starving uh, so they would pray after interesting anyway but for us we pray before and we give thanksgiving for what God has given to us and verse 60 says if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ hey, Timothy if you'll remind them of these things you'll be a good minister of Christ he says you'll you'll be nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained he says but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise their, thyself rather unto godliness. The old wives' fables were, you know, you had to be a, a, a Jew to become a Christian. Okay, you had the Shabbat service on Friday night and, and get, uh, uh, you know, be prepared for, you know, it's, it's just not necessary. Uh, today they push yoga and other things that are not even of, our, of a Christian background on people and, and say, well, this is for your good, you know, but these uh, new uh, Judaizers that are out there are also pushing their uh, thing, but it's basically for control. 
And of course, uh, this is verse 8, for bodily exercise profiteth little. You can really go off on bodily exercises, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Studying your Bible, praying, following after godliness, that is the key to a healthy and successful life, okay? He says, verse 9, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Okay, this is, of course, a, a memory verse. You know, it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, the way you live your life, in charity, the way that you show your love, that agape love where you sacrifice for others, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And Paul says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Read your Bible. Exhort others to live a life that's godly and to the doctrine uh, which is in the Bible which teaches us to um, live a godly life. Okay? Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. In other words, don't forsake your calling and the calling of, for him was being ordained as a preacher, uh, a pastor to preach and to teach and to organize. He says, Meditate upon these things and give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. How do people know that you've been reading your Bible? Well, when you speak, you speak words clearly. You, you, you're, you're grounded. Okay? That people know that you've been reading because they can tell from the depth of your knowledge, the depth of your um, speaking. Okay? It says, Take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt save both thyself and them that hear thee. That's why it's so important to read your Bible, because you may be the only Bible that others ever read. And if you're untrustworthy, if your horn when you blow it is a doesn't sound, you know, instead of da, 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 your, uh, your horn is wanky, then I mean, nobody's going to follow, nobody's going to listen, nobody's going to... They're going to know, they're going to see that you're not all right. Uh, I remember working, um, one of the first jobs I had when I went to seminary, I got a job at a, 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 a clothing um, manu uh, manufacturer, it's a warehouse for Bell's, Fashion Bar, Palais Royal, and stage department stores, and I was chunking boxes, and there was, there was one guy over there that they call Preacher. And he was a little strange because he built altars out on his thing and was, you know, going to make sacrifices. I'm like, why are you doing that? I'm just trying to follow the Bible. And that's why people call him preach or preacher. Uh, they were calling me that for a while. And then all of a sudden they figured out, they started calling me pastor. I wasn't a pastor yet. And I was like, okay, thanks guys. But we would actually talk about the Bible and talk about their faith. And this other guy was all about trying to go back to the Old Testament, I guess. Um, anyway, it's important who you follow, how you follow, okay? Follow the Lord, the whole Bible, not just parts. Um, now, Paul shifts gears a little bit and starts dealing with some of the organization of the uh, church itself in chapter 5, verse 1. He says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. Don't speak down to people. Uh, don't don't uh, get up in the face of, a, of an older person you, you you treat them with respect the elder women treat them as as mothers okay the younger ones as sisters with all purity honor widows that are widows indeed that have no children no one to care for them and they're they're totally you know their husbands passed away and they're they're left with nothing um and if any widow have children or nephews let them learn first to show piety at home to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. A widow who has parents should be home treating them. If, if they're the only ones left, no parents left, and they have children, they should be at home take, taking care and showing them a godly example and teaching them. Okay. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate 
trusteth in God, and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure, a divorcee, is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he is denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Pam and I have had talks, my wife and I have had lots of talks, you know, that's why we work. We work hard to provide for our family. You know, nowadays it takes both of us to work and we work hard and um, it's getting harder. But we love the Lord our God and we love each other and we love our family and so we're going to take care of them. And contrary, verse 9, it shows that it says, let not a widow be taken in to the number under three score years old. So a widow is a widow indeed who's under 60, who's uh, over 60 years old can be taken in. If they're under then, and they've been the wife of one man, if they've passed over 60 years old, they're wife of one man, they're a widow indeed, you can bring them into the number, they'll be fed, taken care of at the church, you know, cared for as a family. Uh, they, their reputation should be intact. Verse 10, well reported of for good works. If she's brought up children, if she's lodged strangers, if she's washed the saints' feet, taking care of the, the preachers, the pastors, uh, if she's received, if she's relieved the afflicted, if she's diligently followed every good work. So, but the younger widows, don't let them come in like that because they have, uh, there's going to come a point in time when they're going to be looking for a husband and they may begin to wax wanton against Christ. Uh, they will marry. Okay? And so... It says if, if, if they wax wanton against Christ in the church, they can cause problems. And then the, verse 12 is in effect where it says having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Uh, they give up on God and go about their own things. So it says, and with will learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, not only idle, but tattlers, busybodies, speaking things which they ought not, stirring up trouble. So I will therefore that the younger women marry bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to, to speak reproachfully. So young women are to guide their own homes. Uh, the children are a blessing to them. and they, You know, it, it, it's, it's a good thing for this to happen. He says in verse 15, though for some are already turned aside after Satan. If any man or wooden, woman, if any man or woman that believeth have widows in their household, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Uh, so the families take care of the, their own families, uh, and then the church will take care of those who have no one else. Let the elders that rule be counted worthy of double honor okay, respect, especially they who labor in word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. That's why you uh, pay a preacher, okay? And you take care of him. And the better you take care of him, the better off you are. Uh, we see this in the Bible. Bless those who bless thee, and curse those who curse thee. Verse 19 says, Against an elder receive not an accusation. But before two or three witnesses, then take this matter into... Um, advisement and find out what's going on it says them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear i charge thee before god that the lord jesus christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one above another doing nothing by partiality okay, god has no favorites we're all the same before him um, when you're considering someone to go into uh, as, a, as a leader, a deacon, it says, uh, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Don't dabble in what other people are doing. And Timothy, you're getting older, so he says, drink no longer just the water, but, but use a little bit of wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Uh, water back then was not pure, it's not that good for you at all, and so uh, they would drink um, a, a, a crotter they would have on the table, almost like a jelly. Uh, they said maximum be three, 
So anyway, um, drink no longer water, but just a little bit of the, the grape juice in there, okay, for thy stomach's sake, and then often infirmities. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise also good works of some are manifest beforehand, that they that are otherwise cannot be hid. And when they're doing evil, it's gonna be it's gonna come out. Chapter 6, verse 1, he says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke, you draw a paycheck, you're a servant. Count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved and partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. You pray that you uh, receive a believing uh, master or believing uh, boss, because um, then things will be fair and equitable. But when your boss is not, you, know, you don't know what's going to happen. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to God, uh, godliness, this man is a, he says, verse 4, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing and evil surmising and this will result a, a, a boss that does not believe is going to be prey to these kind of things they'll have perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself okay. but godliness with contentment is gain living a life content with what you got okay Whatever God has given to you, it's from God. And God can reward, God can bless, God can triply, doubly, he can pour out a blessing, okay? That you can't even receive. But you must remain godly. No matter what's happening around you, no matter what your boss is doing, what your, your workplace is doing, you stick to the plan. You are the light in a dark place. And you're placed there with a purpose and a plan. God does not put you anywhere and in any situation that he doesn't have a plan for you, for his kingdom and his, to be spread, okay? So you are the light into the world, and men hate the light and prefer darkness. But their hearts can change. Pray for them. Pray for God to soften up their hard exterior and, and allow the love of God to draw them into the light and then see what beautiful things happen in your workplace um, in your school, uh, wherever you're placed, okay? He says, verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we will carry, we can carry nothing out. Never seen a, a Loomis or a Wells Fargo um, armored car at, at a funeral, have you? Can't take it with you. And having food and raiment, having food and clothing, let us be content therewith. If you have food, if you have clothing, God promises you those things. He even promises you lodging. He promises you things. He says, but they that will be rich, if you are determined to be rich in this life, you're going to fall into temptation. You're going to fall into a snare. It's a promise. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and a, and a perdition, a lostness. Okay? For the love of money is the root of all evil. Money's not the evil, but the love of it. Okay? Which while some coveted after, they have erred, strayed from the faith, and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Therefore the result is sorrow when you pursue those things. Misplaced love brings about a shipwrecked condition. Okay? Verse 11, he says, But thou, Timothy, you who are listening and watching, says, O man of God, flee these things. Run away. And follow after, you know, attend to, hang on to, cling to righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, 
Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. We all know your life. We've all seen your life. And so continue the course. Stay the course. It says, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he is coming, and he is coming soon. There's nothing withholding him. He could appear at any moment. And then we will start the, the beginning of the Great Tribulation, uh, the Tribulation and the Great Tribulation period. Seven years. Says, I give thee charge in sight of all people that you do this. Let's see. Uh, verse 15. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who hath who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light, no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. The riches come and riches go. Don't you trust in them for your security. The security is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. They that do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. If God has blessed you with riches, then be be willing to distribute the, those riches. And, and, and in so doing, you cannot outgive God. It's laying up in store for themselves a good foundation. Give to your employees. Give to your workers. Uh, bless them because uh, they're stuck with whatever you're giving them, and it's never enough. He says, lay up a good foundation against the time to come that they may hold on to eternal life. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called there is a stewardship in the in the gospel a stewardship is something where you look after something that 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 does not belong to you but you have to take care of it and it's not just bury it you have to tend it and allow it to grow and so in Timothy's case he's to take this uh, focus on God and and to uh, and others and to help grow a church, and he was faithful, and he did it, and he grew churches, he grew whole ministries. Uh, later on, when he was moved out um, from uh, Phrygia, he was take, he was sent to Crete, and he became the bishop over all of Crete, and started hundreds of churches there. And it's because of this work that Paul started, and his seeds that were planted, and these young preacher men who surrendered, that the, the stewardship of the ministry grew and grew and grew. And that's the reason why we are here today as Baptists is that God has brought us to this point. We're still following the same things. We still set up the same way. We, we do everything just like it's in the Bible. Well, verse 21 says, Some, though, which were professing, they've erred, they strayed concerning the faith. He says, But you, Timothy, he says, Grace be with thee. Amen. And so this is the first that was written to Timothy. It was written from Laodicea, the chiefest city of Phrygia, and uh, Pacatiana. All right. So I share this with you and um, pray that uh, it, it, it struck a chord with you. If there's something that in there that, that has caused you to think about your own situation, your own life, uh, who you minister to, how you minister, how you live your life, then good. Uh, I pray that you pray about that now as we pray. And uh, uh, hopefully it will, it will grow, the seed will grow, and that you'll be able to share this uh, great uh, message from Paul to Timothy uh, with many others. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your watch care over us and your protection. Thank you, Lord, for um, what you've done uh, for our family. I pray for those who are uh, just struggling during this time, Lord, that you would open up uh, these windows of, of great blessing as we seek to be godly and to follow after you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.